I like to think that back in the days of kings and queens, men were entirely in charge, and women just worked and had children or looked pretty, and that it was only recently that all this changed. But sometimes things are not quite that simple. You can find women and girls running whole kingdoms in the Middle Ages, like Eleanor of Aquitaine in France, or Lakshmi Bai in India, who fought the British. It's much rarer to find women CEOs running banks or big corporations today. Obviously, we want things to be a little better than in the Middle Ages. And in a lot of ways, they are. But in other ways, we really haven't caught up with them yet. Some kings had hundreds of wives that they locked away so no one else could see them. Others were trapped in the palace themselves, and only their wives or mothers could go out. Sometimes in China, or some African kingdoms, the king's mother would really run the government. This is if the king was trapped. While the king went off to war, or buried himself with games and ceremonies, was locked in the palace, sometimes if the king died, either his wife or daughter would take over instead. Some queens even strapped on armor and fought in wars. Boudicca in um, England, or in Vietnam, there were famous two sisters who led the first of many wars of Vietnamese independence. Lots of sort of heroic warrior women who actually did exist. Sometimes even Vikings. Um, they turn out the, the they find these warrior Viking burials and they analyze the bones. Oh, that one's female. Often though, you get the feeling that most men back then didn't want women to become kings because they were afraid women would be just a little bit too good at it. Most men are kind of insecure. I guess they always have been. Uh, there's a Middle Eastern story that illustrates this. Uh, once upon a time, there was a great king of Assyria who was known to history as Nanus. We don't know what his real name was or if he really existed. Uh, but the story was everywhere. Um, according to the story, Nanus had a servant named Semiramis. Uh, and Semiramis became one of the most famous women in history. She did seem to have existed, but um, no one's quite sure what the story has to do with her actual life. All right, so. According to the story, Nanus had a servant named Semiramis, a girl who's very clever and pretty, and he dearly loved. Every year, there was a great festival, and one game they used to play during the festival was kind of king for a day. Someone would pretend to be king, and everybody would have to do whatever they said, but just for 24 hours. So the day before the festival, Semiramis went to her, uh, went to Nanus, and she said, oh, can I be queen for a day? Oh, it would be really cool, please. And, and Nana said, oh yeah, well, okay, why not? It would be kind of fun to put the servant girl in charge. And he ordered everyone to make believe Samaramas was really queen. So, according to the story, as soon as the crown was placed on her head, Samaramas called in the king's generals and bodyguard. And he said, she said, <clears throat> so I don't think King Nanas treats you very well, does he? Uh, in fact, I think he's pretty bad to you. You don't really like him, do you? Um, before the day was over, Nanus was locked away in a dungeon somewhere and Semiramis was actually queen. Uh, and it turned out Semiramis was really good at it. Um, she was much better at being um, running a kingdom than Nanus had ever been, even though Nanus wasn't bad, right? Nanus had an empire, but she expanded the empire to become the greatest empire in world history. Uh, according to stories, she not only built the city of Babylon, okay, she was responsible for the Hanging Gardens uh, and a whole bunch of other great cities. According to the stories, she was the greatest conqueror in world history. She conquered a giant empire that stretched all the way from India to Ethiopia. Um, and apparently Alexander the Great was really obsessed with Semiramis. He felt he was a failure in life because he was trying to reconstruct Semiramis's empire. She was like his great rival and enemy because everywhere you go in Persia, people would say, oh, well, yeah, that's impressive, but you know, Semiramis. <laughs> And he was like, like, some girl can do better than me. I'm going to go into India. I don't care. And that's basically got his army destroyed. Uh, and, and he ended up, you know, sort of exploring, like, how to get to Ethiopia once again to reproduce her exploits. And it's eventually what killed him.